What's up EFD? With this year's Golden Boy set to be announced soon, let's take a look at some of the worst players to be nominated for the award in years gone by. We've spoken enough about disappointing winners like Anderson and Pato in the past, so here are 10 players you either won't believe were shortlisted or have seen their careers fall off since being nominated. Let's go. 10. Julian Draxler We come to Julian Draxler first because he's had a much finer career than many others on this list. However, since being nominated for the Golden Boy back in 2013, his star has gradually dimmed. The year he was shortlisted, the German had already announced himself in the Bundesliga, hitting 10 goals and 3 assists for Schalke in the 2012-13 campaign at 19 years of age, having become the club's youngest ever debutante when he made his first appearance two years earlier. It was little surprise then that he was one of the favourites for the award, along with Raphael Varane, Romelu Lukaku and eventual winner Paul Pogba. But when you compare his career to that trio now, it's clear who has fared the worst. Despite big money moves to Wolfsburg and PSG, Draxler has struggled to recapture the magic that made him one of Europe's hottest prospects. He has failed to hit double figures for goals in a single league season since his nomination, and a mixture of injuries and poor form has seen him make over 20 starts in a campaign just once since 2014. And his stats reflect this, whereas he averaged nearly 3 shots and 2.5 key passes per 90 during his Schalke glory days, he now musters just over a shot and creates 1.4 chances in a free-scoring PSG side. He may only be 27, but it still feels like Draxler is seeing his best years pass him by. 9. Matteo Ganduzzi When Matteo Ganduzzi was nominated for the Golden Boy Award in 2019, it felt well deserved. Following his move to Arsenal from Ligue 2 outfit Lorient a year earlier, the then 19-year-old became one of Unai Emery's most trusted players at the Emirates, adding some much-needed dynamism and tenacity to a lukewarm Gunners midfield. He ended the 2018-19 campaign having played more minutes than Alex Awobi, Mesut Ozil and Henrik Mkhitaryan, and consolidated himself as one of the most consistent performers in North London. Having his name alongside the likes of Kai Havertz and Alfonso Davis was a just reward. However, following Emery's sacking and Mikel Arteta's appointment, things quickly went downhill for the Frenchman. He struggled to adapt to the new coach's system and following a post-match brawl with Brighton striker Neil Mopai was excluded from training, not making another appearance for the rest of the campaign. Linked to Barcelona, PSG and Atletico Madrid, Genduzzi ended up with a lone move to Hertha Berlin, with speculation that his attitude problems put off the bigger clubs. Still only 21 as this goes out, the Paris-born youngster still has time to turn his career around. But right now, he looks some way off being a Champions League midfielder, let alone a genuine world beater. Before we move on to our next Golden Boy nominee, just a quick reminder to subscribe to EFD and hit the notification bell so you never miss another great video like this one. We put content like this out every single day, so you really don't want to miss out. Anyway, let's move on. 8. Richedli Bazour now 24 and playing for Vitesse, Richedli Bazour once had the world at his feet. Shortlisted for the Golden Boy alongside Yuri Tielemans, Deli Alli and Ruben Neves in 2016, the Dutch defensive midfielder had made a name for himself during his second season in the Ajax first team, winning the club's Talent of the Year award after notching up 5 goals and 4 assists in 29 league appearances. This form led to a €12 million Euro move to Wolfsburg the following January, but despite being linked with Man United and Barcelona, it wouldn't get any better for Bazur. The youngster struggled to replicate his Eredivisie form in the Bundesliga and was sent on loan to Porto, where injuries and disciplinary issues saw him axed from the first team entirely. He spent the rest of the season back at boyhood club Utrecht, where he once again impressed. However, it wasn't enough for any big teams to notice, and while he's now one of the key men at Vitesse, it feels like the player once seen as a future superstar has now found his level. 7. Diego Contento one of the more unfortunate entries on this list, Diego Contento was nominated for the Golden Boy back in 2010, having come through the ranks at boyhood club Bayern Munich at the same time as David Alaba and Toni Kroos. The German left-back was favoured by then-manager Louis van Gaal, who was focused on integrating academy products into the first team, and was effectively first choice during the Dutchman's tenure at the Allianz, impressing with five tackles and interceptions a match during the 10-11 campaign. However, recurrent injury problems meant Contento rarely strung together more than a handful of consecutive appearances, and by the 2012-13 season struggled to even make the squad, with Alaba, two years his junior, consolidating himself in the left-back slot as the Bavarians won a famous treble. He would have more luck following a move to Bordeaux in 2014. 
but after coming back to Germany to turn out to Fortuna Dusseldorf was struck by an ACL injury, and in two seasons at the Merkur Spiel Arena, Contento made zero Bundesliga appearances. With a bit more luck, he could have developed alongside some of the world's very best players for a number of years, and may even have lived up to his golden boy credentials. But now the 30-year-old is playing in the German second tier with SV Sandhausen. 6. Javi Ontiveros the 2017 Golden Boy shortlist is one of the most star-studded ever seen, with eventual winner Kylian Mbappe joined by Marcus Rashford, Usman Dembele, Christian Pulisic, Gabi Jesus, Gianluigi Donnarumma and Matthijs de Ligt. All players who at some point in their young careers have been valued at 100 million euros or more. One of the less eye-catching names among those nominees was Javi Ontiveros, who at 19 had enjoyed a promising first season in the Malaga first team, hitting two goals and three assists in limited minutes for the Andalusian club. However, the Marbella-born winger's exploits didn't match those of the spectacular talents he was listed alongside, and he struggled to build on his early promise. In 2017-18, he was in and out of the squad due to disciplinary issues, and after just one start was loaned to Valladolid in the Segunda Division. He eventually returned to Malaga after they themselves had been relegated and failed to make a big impact in the Spanish second tier, contributing to just seven goals in 31 games. A move to Villarreal in 2019 promised to get his career back on track, but Ontiveros managed just seven league appearances for the Yellow Submarine and is now on loan at newly promoted Cuesca, where the majority of his appearances have also come off the bench. 5. Alan Halilovic Making his first senior appearance at 16 back in 2012, Alan Halilovic became the youngest debutante in the history of Dinamo Zagreb, a club which has produced some of Europe's very best players in the last 20 years. And less than two weeks later, he became the club's youngest ever scorer, beating a record set by then teammate Mateo Kovacic. He looked like Croatia's next big thing, even making his national team debut against Portugal before he turned 17. But somehow it took until 2015, a year after he had signed for Barcelona, for Halilovic to be nominated for the Golden Boy, and he made the shortlist again in 2016. However, by this point it was already clear the young Croatian wouldn't live up to his potential. He spent his first season in Catalonia with Barca's B team and the following term was sent on loan to Sporting Gijón, helping keep the Asturias club in La Liga with three goals and five assists. But with Halilovic's family and Barca at odds over his coaching and development, he was sold in 2016 to Hamburg, where he made just one start. And following a disappointing loan spell at Las Palmas, moved to Milan on a free. That summer, Croatia made their historic run to the World Cup final, but Halilovic had to watch from home, having not earned a cap in over two years. Two more unsuccessful loans followed, and Milan terminated his contract in October 2020. He is now without a club at 24. 4. Tom Davis It comes as a surprise that Tom Davis was nominated for the Golden Boy not once, but twice. And while his inclusion in the 2017 shortlist was warranted given he had become a regular starter for Everton at just 18 years of age, the fact he made it again a year later having shown little in the way of progress is more puzzling. Especially when you consider Vinicius Jr, Ryan Sessegnon and Moyes Keane all missed out on a nomination in 2018. Along with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Davis was seen as a future star for the Toffees, but while his teammate has developed into one of the Premier League's most potent number nines, the Liverpool-born midfielder has continually struggled to influence games, creating fewer chances per 90 than Morgan Schneiderlin and Fabian Delph in 2019-20. In fact, Davis hasn't shown significant improvements in almost any element of his game since breaking through in 2016. Having notched up five goal involvements in his debut season at Goodison, the Englishman mustered just four across the three campaigns that followed, while his defensive output hasn't increased either. And after the signings of Decoure and James Rodriguez, he is now very much a bench option, more notorious for dressing up in New York and hanging out with hip musicians in Toxteth warehouses than for what he does on the pitch. 3. Yaya Sonogo Infamous for being the man Arsene Wenger supposedly chose to sign instead of Antoine Griezmann in 2013, Yaya Sonogo's Gunners career has become the subject of ridicule in the years since. He made just two Premier League starts at the Emirates, and loan spells with Crystal Palace and Ajax failed to get anything more out of him. But it's easy to forget that he was a genuine prospect when he signed. The then 20-year-old had been scoring freely for Auxerre in the French second tier, had also impressed for France at the Under-20 World Cup, and not only did he make the Golden Boy shortlist, but finished sixth in the final rankings, ten places above Gunners' teammate Serge Gnabry. But after that, Sonogo rarely shone. A move to Toulouse in 2017-18 saw him find his level somewhat, but even his jaunt in the south of France came to a sad conclusion. 
After three years and 12 goals, he was released by the club in the summer of 2020 and remains without an employer. 2. Bebe Nominated for the Golden Boy alongside Eden Hazard, Christian Eriksen and David De Gea in 2010, Bebe signed for Manchester United the same year, a transfer now infamous for the fact manager Sir Alex Ferguson had never watched him play. And by the time Mario Balotelli beat him to the award, his Red Devils career already looked as good as over. The Portuguese midfielder, who had been playing in the country's third tier the season before, clearly wasn't ready for Premier League football and made just two sub appearances before being sent on loan to Besiktas the following year. Meanwhile, the deal that took him to United, which saw agent George Mendes paid over a third of the 9 million euro fee, became the subject of a criminal investigation in Portugal. Now 30, Bebe can look back on a journeyman's career, and not one without its merits. He scored 12 league goals for a poor Pacos de Ferreira side in 2013-14, and is now in his fifth season at Rayo Vallecano. But it's nevertheless abundantly clear he should never have been nominated for such a prestigious award. 1. Julian Green A player we interviewed all the way back in 2016, Julian Green was nominated for the Golden Boy two years earlier, fresh off a summer in which he'd made his debut for the USA and scored for them at the World Cup, becoming the country's youngest ever scorer at the tournament. Born in Florida and growing up in Bavaria, Green came through Bayern Munich's academy and the young winger impressed for the club's reserve side, scoring 15 goals in 23 appearances in the 2013-14 season and was given his first team debut by Pep Guardiola too, coming on against Siska Moscow in the Champions League. He then went to Hamburg on loan the following campaign but was hauled off at half-time on his debut and failed to make another start for the club. Despite netting a memorable hat-trick against Inter Milan in the summer 2016 preseason, Green never made another appearance for Bayern, or in the Bundesliga for that matter, spending the last five seasons in the German second tier. So those were our 10 worst Golden Boy nominees, but do you have any shouts yourself? Get discussing in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, why not leave it a like and stick around on EFD by clicking on screen right now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.